the, you know, the, the same things that lead to all disease are the same things that lead to atrial fibrillation, right? You know, poor, uh, poor nutrition, poor lifestyle, poor emotional uh, state. Uh, and, you know, kind of talking about the lifestyle where we talk about uh, poor sleep leads to AFib, lack of sunshine leads to AFib, environmental toxins leads to AFib. So as we start to clean all these things up, now we can often resolve atrial fibrillation or if you do need pharmaceuticals or you do need an ablation procedure, then you will be the healthiest version of you going into those procedures and that makes a big big difference not only in what i would say you know personally and common sense but again that's also in the medical literature that if you kind of tune someone up uh prior to one of these uh, procedures you can actually get better uh, better results you're listening to the nutrition world podcast a show about navigating the intricacies of holistic wellness We're a natural health food store located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we believe that optimal health and peak performance should be accessible to everyone. And on today's episode, we're speaking to Dr. Jack Wolfson. He's a board certified holistic cardiologist, author, and speaker. And Ed's been a big fan of his book, The Paleo Cardiologist, for a long time. And one of the important subjects in that book is atrial fibrillation. It's estimated that 12.1 million people will have AFib by 2030. So it's important to know the underlying issues that cause it and what can be done to help prevent it. Dr. Wolfson gives us some expert insight into exactly what AFib is, how lifestyle and environmental factors impact AFib, and of course, some practical steps and products to help you along the way. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this conversation between Ed and Dr. Jack Wolfson. Well, good morning, Dr. Jack Wolfson, and welcome to Nutrition World's podcast. Thanks so much, Ed. It's uh, fantastic to be on, and uh, i got a lot to talk about uh, health-wise. Get a lot of people to help out and uh, keep them safe uh, in, a, in a crazy, uh, crazy world. I love it. Uh, I love you. I know we've connected before. Uh, you did one podcast on my other uh, platform, The Holistic Navigator, during the midst of the crazy and just wonderful. But I must say that I completely uh, respect you in so many levels, one of which is, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of... Uh, cowards out there in the field of health and medicine and even nutrition. And there's also a small group of superheroes. And you are in the group of that superhero to me. In fact, I do a radio show called Vital Health Radio every week. And it's actually sponsored by a hospital. And I have a physician as my co-host. And we have what we call a coward of the week and a hero of the week. Because I'm outspoken, I'm just going to tell the truth. And you are have been one of my heroes of the week, Dr. Wilson, for how you stand how you have, uh, think outside the box. You're not brainwashed. You don't uh, just click the boxes and go home with a big paycheck. You do things to help people. I've loved following you with your family as they grow up, your kids. you got a, a beautiful whole set up there. And uh, you're in Colorado right now. I know in your office is in Arizona. But we're going to talk about AFib today because I have been listening to people and watching people for four plus decades come into nutrition world. And they're so frustrated with this AFib thing that, and, you know, I know we have I sometimes advice and things, but you're the king expert. And I want to say, you know, for people who don't know you, uh, one is you have the most amazing book called The Paleocardiologist that I have sold to many people and also referenced uh, because the standard care of cardiologists, and they're great people. It's just I think the system's broke, so they don't really access what you've gone on your way to do. But you are a board-certified cardiologist, fellow of the American College of Cardiology, and has emerged as one of the leading holistic natural cardiologists. And uh, prior to opening your Wolfson in, in, uh, Integrative Cardiology, you're chairman of the Department of Medicine and director of cardiac rehabilitation in Paradise Valley Hospital, Arizona, and a partner in one of the largest cardiologist practices. And you've been well-spoken, well-printed. Your book's been on the number one bestseller list. And I just uh, actually was really excited all weekend long for this 30, 35-minute episode. And I've done hundreds of these, and I think today's one of my more exciting times. So let's get into the nitty-gritty of this. Tell people what AFib actually is, because it is not, uh, it's pretty common. It's about, they're predicting 12 million people in 2030 will have this AFib. So give us a little uh, primer on this, if you will, Dr. Wilson. 
No, most certainly. Thanks so much, Ed. And yeah, it's always great to talk to people that uh, that are really aware of what's going on, what it really you know means to be uh, healthy and well, uh, operating in the health paradigm as opposed to the sickness paradigm. So again, you know, thank you for having me on the show to be able to express my opinions and thoughts. And yeah, like you said, you know, I spent 16 years as a conventionally trained you know cardiologist in the biggest group of state in the state of Arizona, and we saw a lot, a lot, a lot of people with atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is an irregular heart rhythm. It can lead to symptoms such as uh, palpitations, shortness of breath, chest pain, lightheadedness can cause people to pass out. And ultimately it's also a risk factor for, for having a stroke. And of course, whenever you mention stroke, you really tend to get people's attention very quickly because certainly nobody wants to have a stroke. We've all had uh, stroke people in our lives or even just kind of seen them around in society. <clears throat> and that's obviously what we uh, do not want as we look to have our best uh, lives and live that 100 year heart, uh, you know, life that uh, that I always talk about. But as it pertains to AFib, yeah, it's definitely getting more and more common, certainly as, as the population potentially uh, ages, although as you know, it, it appears that the life expectancy in the United States has peaked over the last few years at around, you know, let's say roughly 80 years of age, uh, you know, but again, uh, as, as there's more sickness in the world leading to more, or let me say this, as there's more unhealthy food, unhealthy lifestyle, and stress as a major factor, all these things lead to health issues and ultimately to atrial fibrillation. So we can kind of unpack all those, you know, food, lifestyle, and even the American College of Cardiology is getting a lot more into uh, mental health and emotional health as it relates to atrial fibrillation. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know, there are doors cracking open that I never thought would. And part of that, I think, uh, is, is, again, the, some of the blessings of the past two years we went through. And I do know that, um, you know, AFib is devastating when it's bad for a patient and client because it just saps the energy to a point that just almost they can't function. The quality of life goes down. And on the other side, sometimes the treatments, like all treatments, can be life-saving or they can be life-taking. And because the, the super heavy-duty uh, blood thinners, uh, I know many people sometimes just throw their hands up and say, my life's not worth living with all these medicines. And so it's that they don't know what to do. And if they are looking for integrative, more holistic ideas, it's not easy to find. As you know, Dr. Wilson, you are a, a kind of a lone voice in the darkness, and I so respect you for that. So uh, so the spinning of the blood because of AFib can create higher levels of potential clots and things. And so if a person wants to learn more about this and they have family members of themselves, uh, I know your website. I love your website. I go to it all the time. In fact, I give out one. I printed one of your four page pieces on your blog about how you eat because I give it to every client that I counsel. And I say, this is how Dr. Wolfson eats, but it's also how Ed Jones eats because we, we both agree on the same dietary habits. So what does a patient do now if they want, want to learn more about, OK, they've been diagnosed and they want to expand a toolbox. They're not trying to tell their cardiologist they're wrong. They just want to be more informed. What what would they want to start learning? Well, you know, and uh, atrial fibrillation is the number one reason why people come to see me personally in Arizona, why they contact our office to have a virtual consultation with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and, and, you know, to that end, again, it's, uh, it, it's a major pain point because, again, people, they don't like the symptoms. As you alluded to, they don't like the pharmaceuticals. Maybe they want a different approach than surgical ablations or, or catheter-based ablation procedures. They, they really want the best in health and wellness. And that's why, again, they contact us or they read our information. We're about to release our new website for Natural Heart Doctor. So that'll have a lot more information about atrial fibrillation on there. You know, but again, I, you know, atrial fibrillation is something we've got time to figure out as well. You don't have to rush into any intervention. You don't have to rush into an ablation. You don't have to rush onto the pharmaceuticals. And, and for that, again, yeah, there's time to have this conversation. But ultimately, you know, the, the same things that lead to all disease are the same things that lead to atrial fibrillation, right? You know, poor, uh, poor nutrition, poor lifestyle, 
poor emotional uh, state. Uh, and, you know, kind of talking about the lifestyle where we talk about uh, poor sleep leads to AFib, a lack of sunshine leads to AFib, environmental toxins leads to AFib. So as we start to clean all these things up, now we can often resolve atrial fibrillation, or if you do need pharmaceuticals or you do need an ablation procedure, then you will be the healthiest version of you going into those procedures. And that makes a big, big difference, not only in what I would say, you know, personally and common sense, but again, that's also in the medical literature that if you kind of tune someone up uh, prior to one of these uh, procedures, you can actually get better, uh, better results. And, you know, that's that's not part of the conversation. I don't know about your uh, neck of the woods where you live with traditional medicines, but here, that would never be brought up. One is it's not always the fault of the healthcare practitioner. Their hands are tied with insurance. And secondly is there's no money to do lifestyle management and embracing what the common sense you just spoke about. And the thing is, you know, textbook medicine, uh, I think they decided early on not to put any common sense or wisdom in it. It's just a black and white, you know, textbook full of a lot of stuff. But there still has to be uh, I think medicine and healing is an art as much as a science. You are an artist. There's no doubt because you, you've you got this. I, I mean, so many medical people have this. you got to code the disease. It's a separate entity. It's not not really a part of the package. It's kind of like it's an F-150 truck and part of it's broken. So we're just going to go in there and fix that part. And there's times that works. But you and I both know that raising the level of health will help everything. That, that what's that saying? Uh, uh, rising tide raises all ships. Well, uh, raising your health will will usually decrease all symptoms, make you feel better, and make outcomes better because you're raising the total health. And you talk about EMFs, and we talk about chemicals, and you talk about uh, all these nutrient deficiencies. And I know uh, your wife, a uh, chiropractor uh, physician, she's amazing with some of her information too that I know that uh, helps you a lot along the path. So again, ablation, Tell somebody real quickly what ablation is, just in case they don't know. Yeah, so an, an ablation is where that typically, you know, these days, because it can be done surgically or it can be done with a tube or what's known as a catheter that goes in through the groin and then through the neck and then goes into the heart and actually burns the top part of the heart called the atria. Uh, and the left atrium and the right atrium, they get burned and therefore kind of, uh, you know, again, like breaking up the atrial fibrillation electrical circuit. And that can be effective, but it's only effective 50-50% of the time. Again, that's in the medical literature in the best hands. It works half the time. And ultimately, a lot of people that I see, of course, they have to go through a second ablation, a third ablation. And again, I'm not opposed to those things, but A, can we try and do it without the ablation? Because obviously, there are short-term risks of an ablation, including uh, puncturing the heart, puncturing the lung, uh, caught and people have died during ablation procedures. In fact, uh, one out of 200 people die within 30 days of an ablation procedure. Really? Uh, and ultimately, of course, it's it's a large amount of radiation. So the radiation exposure that people get causes long-term damage as well. And even the damage, as you can imagine, to burning heart tissue uh, can lead to some long-term sequelae or, or problems uh, uh, as well. So ultimately, if we can avoid ablation, great. Or if you do need an ablation, Again, we need to make you the healthiest version of you. And we do that again by eating the right food, the right lifestyle, the right thought processes. And then also what I'm of course big on is the concept of test, don't guess. So when we test for all of these vitamin and minerals, when we test for markers of inflammation, when we test levels of glutathione, and I know you're a big proponent of glutathione and you've been such a champion of something like NAC, N-acetylcysteine, that the purpose of that is to boost glutathione levels. We look for these uh, you know, mold mycotoxins, environmental toxins. And as we do this super duper advanced testing, then we come up with the ultimate plan to say, all right, this is the nutrition, this is the lifestyle, this is the mental health and wellness, and then these are the nutrients that we'd like to support you with that, again, are all evidence-based, but also we get the information from the testing to guide what, you know, obviously what you guys do over at Nutrition World, you know, for sure. Because any 
of us could say, well, you know, I heard magnesium was good. I heard potassium was good. I heard omega-3 fish oil was good. There's a lot of different things that people can use, but we can also come up with the concept of how do we know what to use? We test, don't guess. And then once you get the testing, then you can dial in the products that would truly be helpful. I just absolutely love your common sense, uh, which is quite rare today, as we know. I'm so connected to what you're saying. Uh, I do feel like, you know, I think people like you and I who've done this for so long, we're pretty darn good at guessing. But it's still, it's the, getting the real numbers. And I'll give you a really quick uh, little story here. I have 27 staff members, and I did an omega-3 test on all of them about six months ago. Keep in mind, these people come to me and work for me, not because they want paychecks, because they believe in what we're doing. All of these people supplement, and most of them eat far better than 98% of the population, and 50% of them had an omega-3 index of 4 or less. We need an omega index of 8 and above to have good cardiac health and mental health, and these are people way above the average. So I was actually shocked. So you're exactly right, testing and testing. And again, I want to encourage people, if you're in the throes of some crisis with your health, Dr. Wolfson's available for consultations and and you can do this from a distance right with zoom and the way practice way you practice medicine yeah i've been doing uh, virtual since 2012 uh you know most of my patients do come from out of state so the follow-up is uh on zoom or back you know we used to use skype or and certainly still use phones so those are all options but you know back to your omega-3 that you said you know people with the highest levels of omega-3 have the lowest risk of everything omega-3s they, they make up the cell membrane, a large portion of the cell membrane, which is the brain of the cell that allows things uh, inside the cell that belong and keeps things outside of the cell that don't belong. This, this super communication fence that surrounds every cell and it's loaded with omega-3s. It's also loaded with cholesterol, which is why we always profess and teach that cholesterol is so important, which is why all uh, animal species make it. But the omega-3, you know, the best thing to do is certainly get that from seafood, load up on seafood, wild salmon, sardines, anchovies, shellfish, uh, salmon roe is another fantastic source. But again, uh, we can always supplement with omega-3s. Uh, to that note, there has been some, uh, you know, studies, and I think this is a good t uh, time to mention this, that talked about omega-3s actually increasing the risk of atrial fibrillation, omega-3 supplements. So I want people, uh, I know in your world, they're very plugged in with the information. I want to clarify that. When you give a population of people who eat McDonald's cookies and cupcakes and you give them an omega-3, that's likely a lousy and cheap form of the omega-3, you're going to get bad results. When you are a healthy person and you take quality supplements with foundational items such as a good quality multivitamin, and then you add an omega-3 onto that, I think you're gonna get fantastic results. And there is plenty of evidence that shows that. Again, the, the Gizzi Prevention trial that showed, that was done in Italy years ago, that showed that omega-3 supplementation after a heart attack led to a much greater survival than the people who didn't get the omega-3. So again, test, don't guess, eat more seafood, supplement with quality products, but on top of a good nutrition, you know, uh, nutritional supplement foundation, that's the key. That is wonderful. And, and again, you, you spoke, uh, referred to quality matters big time, not just quality of supplements, quality of your, the sources of your food. And, um, you know, food is not just gas for the car. We, we, we need to search and be not live in a cave, but do the best we can with decisions. And I want to repeat one thing to make sure people didn't think they misunderstood you. Cholesterol's not a bad guy. I preach it all the time, of course, that it's a good guy, but it makes hormones and so many things. So your take on cholesterol? Well, you know, again, cholesterol, like, yeah, like we just said, uh, everybody who's listening hopefully knows that cholesterol is beneficial. The most important marker when it comes to uh, heart risk and cholesterol or lipids, as it should be known more, more appropriately, is a ratio, the ApoB, ApoA1 ratio. That is a simple blood test. It should be, again, part of everyone's uh, testing package. And that's the most important thing. Total cholesterol doesn't matter. LDLs, HDLs, they don't matter. What matters is that ApoB, ApoA1 ratio. All of that pales in comparison to atrial fibrillation. I'm sorry, excuse me, to inflammation, 
especially as it pertains to uh, uh, atrial fibrillation. So we wanna check those markers of inflammation, HSCRP, myeloperoxidase, uh, uh, phospholipase A2. There's so many different markers of inflammation. If you're inflamed, you're in trouble. You better head figure it out. But, you know, Ed, I do wanna, um, I, I do wanna take away any possibility of giving people a little bit of that uh, concept of do the best you can. Because uh, you and I both, uh, again, I'm not into this do the best you can. Uh, it's, just, it's just do the best. And uh, so many people, <clears throat> you know, they'll, they'll eat 70% organic, 80% organic. We need to really take it to the next level. Number one, we don't want to support, you know, support the people that are destroying this planet with GMO foods, pesticide riddled, you know, foods, destroying the planet for, you know, for us, for our children, for the animals, you name it. And ultimately, as we actually look at people's levels of chemicals, people who are in the highest third, for example, of a certain uh, pesticide uh, called the pyrethroid uh, class, they are at 300% higher risk of having a cardiovascular death uh, in a certain time period than the people at the lowest level of pesticides. Mm. Lots of information on pesticides. Obviously, a lot more coming out about the dangers of glyphosate, how that leads to all different problems. Uh, again, whatever is killing the bugs is killing us. We got to just step out of the mindset of, well, you know, once in a while, I'll eat this or once in a while, I have that. Uh, it's just it's just not good enough for, you know, for for myself, for my family, for the planet. And uh, I, I don't like to give people any kind of leeway on that. It's a matter of just, you know, again, just do, do the best, always do the best. I love that. I love that because, you know, sometimes we are our own worst enemies. Certainly I have been, and we can find little excuses to kind of fudge. And then that gets bigger and greater. And then results just are are, are diminishing by the moment when you do that. I mean, if you're going to give uh, an effort to something in life, you know what I mean? You kill yourself, but be serious with it and be at the 99 to 100 percent level. And and uh, don't don't beat up on yourself if you occasionally stumble. But but yes, put the big plan in action. Put the, the bar pretty dang high for yourself uh, back real quickly, just so we make sure. It's, uh, so we've covered omega three, extremely important. I, I want to talk about magnesium one second, because uh, I certainly advise and uh, recommend that to a lot of people for, again, heart rhythms and, and all the things that come with magnesium deficiencies. Is that something you also test for and you recommend? Uh oh, uh, certainly, you know, and that's what's great about this intracellular testing is that it tells us what's going on inside of the cells and that's where the action happens. So intracellular magnesium, intracellular potassium, intracellular levels of glutathione. It's not a matter what's floating around in the blood. Again, it's got to get into the blood cells. It's got to get into the heart cells uh, ultimately is where magnesium uh, is. So magnesium is certainly one of those things that we test for. And again, surprisingly enough, uh, Ed, is that uh, people's serum levels, you know, in the blood, they are often in the normal range, but intracellular, they're low uh, or, or they're on the lower side. And I can't tell you how many people I've seen over the years, uh, Ed, believe it or not, they've come out of the hospital after a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation and no one even tested their magnesium levels in the blood. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't checked at all. So again, that's a great opportunity to, you know, to teach people, you know, on that atrial fibrillation, again, it's a diagnosis that we can often uh, reverse, we can limit. There are natural anticoagulants that people can use. Not everybody should be on a blood thinner. For anyone who's listening, there's a website called chadsvasc.org, chads, C-H-A-D-S, vasc, V-A-S-C, dot O-R-G. And again, that is a online calculator set up by uh, cardiologists to show people what their annual stroke risk is. And again, we want to teach people to, hey, if your risk of having a stroke with atrial fibrillation is 4%, can we lower that down naturally, holistically? Do you need a pharmaceutical? Do you want to take a, a pharmaceutical blood thinner for an annual stroke risk of 4% and the pharmaceutical lowers it down to 1.5%, again, according to their data? So uh, again, there's all just, this is about education. You know, you know, you and I are educating people right now. There are so many different approaches to atrial fibrillation. 
Uh, and uh, again, you don't need the pharmaceuticals, you don't need the blood thinners, you don't need ablations. Sometimes you need those things, but again, talk to a doctor to, to get that opinion. And like we talked about you know, before, financially, ablations, uh, cardiology visits, ancillary testing that the cardiologists do, they think they're doing the right thing. And in some cases they are, but the one thing that everybody knows, they make a ton of money doing that. I'm not opposed to people making money, but again, we want to do it by giving people health and not sickness. That's, oh, wow. Just rings my bells, Dr. Wilson. That's so uh, direct and also very honest. There's no doubt. Now, uh, just to touch real quickly on it, you know, the drug of choice, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I think most people, at least in this area, who have an AFib diagnosis, uh, because, again, AFib causes spinning in these chambers, which increases blood clot risk. They're on Coumadin. And then what happens with Coumadin, of course, sometimes you have a hemorrhagic stroke, which means you bleed out. Sometimes you're freezing cold all the time. You don't feel well. And it, it can be, you know, dis de really decreased quality of life significantly. But, of course, they're, they're pushed with such fear mongering that they're, they're unwilling to ever miss one dose, which if you're on Coumadin, you got to do what you're told until you, decide, until you do something not to be on it. But what are the and I'm, and you're not going to say that they should get off Coumadin and get on this. But what are the natural anticoagulants? Because I love natokinase. What do you what do you recommend? Yeah, you know the uh, uh, certainly for many years it was warfarin, a uh, brand name Coumadin, and that had all kind of problems, including the fact that it works because it inhibits vitamin K. Yet. Uh, 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 professionals like you and I are always talking about the benefits of vitamin K. So if Coumadin warfarin is an inhibitor of vitamin K, then that's not a good thing. And it's not a good thing. Again, it leads to enhanced va vascular calcification, for example. Um, when we talk now, mostly uh, uh, the people who are now taking quote unquote blood thinners or anticoagulants, they're taking these newer oral anticoagulants, things like uh, Pradaxa, Xarelto, uh, Eliquis, uh, and but you know to your point, they all can cause hemorrhagic strokes. They can all cause catastrophic bleeding. If you're in a car accident while you're on one of those, uh, you're in serious trouble if trauma happens. So back to your point, can we use things that are that are more natural? And again, stack them on top of the right food, the right lifestyle, the right thought processes. And natokinase is a great example of that. The Japanese have studied that. Uh, for years, they've actually studied it against warfarin, and people do just as well. Again, those are smaller studies, and uh, we don't have a ton of data. But I will say this is that for people that have a lower stroke risk with a fib on that Chad's VASC uh, scoring system, none of my patients have ever had a stroke when they are at lower risk, Chad score of two or less uh, under my care. So, again, all the things that we do, natokinase is a fantastic uh, product. Um, there are others uh, as well that would help kind of, again, keeping the blood naturally thin. But let me just talk about natokinase in the sense that back in the 80s, when somebody was having a heart attack, the treatment, the only treatment back then was a clot buster called streptokinase. And it was like that liquid Drano that would go in there and, and again, would be injected through the veins to open up that artery that was blocked. That was streptokinase. You just mentioned natokinase. And again, this kinase enzyme that changes the particular molecular structure and allows these clots based on fibrin to be broken up. Uh, and again, they work, they work successfully to do so. Natokinase, typically one, uh, uh, one cap uh, two times a day, possibly three times a day away from food. Excellent, uh, excellent part of the strategy. I love it, love it. Well, at this point, I want you to, to tell people if they're listening, they have a family member themselves that are, has a diagnosis of AFib or any cardiac issues, and they can't find services locally that could um, appeal to their place in life and their mentality, how would they contact you for an appointment? Well, you know, I don't like to think of myself as a second opinion. I like, I'd like to think of myself as a first opinion. But that mm -hmm. being said, hey, if a doctor's told you one thing and you want to hear possibly a, a, an alternative, yeah, feel free to, uh, to get a hold of our office. Uh, you can go to our website at naturalheartdoctor.com. That's naturalheartdoctor.com. Uh, Ed, I know you guys, again, have been uh, a, a huge advocate for my book. 
uh, and a promoter of my book, The Paleo Cardiologist, The Natural Way to Heart Health. If you're looking to kind of introduce someone to, I mean, the whole paradigm of uh, healthy heart living, I think the book is a fantastic place uh, uh, to go. So, you know, again, if you guys are carrying the book, you want to get it from uh, you guys, feel free. Uh, we do also have a website called freeheartbook.com. You can mm -hmm. also get it over there. But uh, uh, the most important thing is get the book, give it to someone that you love, and uh, hopefully together we can make them a healthier person. And in doing so too, it, right? And it's not just about atrial fibrillation, but as we live that healthy lifestyle and eat the right foods and testing and evidence-based supplements, that's how we get the 100-year heart. That's how we prevent heart attacks and strokes and atrial fibrillation. And we prevent... Uh, dementia and Parkinson's and mm. cancer and everything else that we do. So again, I appreciate you having me on your show. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, the people who I speak to, and of course, I have, uh, you know, we're really a wellness clinic. We just have a great store, but we also have, we have 17 practitioners and everything else. Uh, many people who would counsel with us will come to you first. But most people, of course, end up kind of many crashing on their health before they actually search out uh, different options and, and they have to learn the hard way. So I, I love it. And, and again, your site is naturalheartdoctor.com. And I'm just so thrilled that you were able to take the time out. It's, uh, your, your sites are wonderful. We're going to keep plugging you. We're going to be buddies forever. And uh, you're changing the world. And, you know, I always say, I used to say on my other podcast, The Holistic Navigator, I separate the world into two classes of people, learners and non-learners. And I love the fact that you are such a learner and you're so open and you're so willing to share. And you're not trying to make the, 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 the $5 million salary because if you and I both know, and I don't know you that well, if we do the right thing, we're going to have enough of what we need because we're going to serve people. We're going to serve their heart. And that's what you're doing with you and your family. And you talk the talk, you walk the walk. You know, you're not telling me as a cardiologist, uh, Ed, uh, you know, I think you need to be on these four pharmaceuticals as you sit there with 60 pounds overweight, leaning over a desk. That just doesn't bring true to me. And I just think you are changing the world for the better place. And I'm glad I can call you my friend, my friend. <laughs> I, I, again, I appreciate it so much. And uh, yeah, what you guys are doing over there at Nutrition World and all the information you're getting out there, there's a lot of people against our message and, uh, you know, for a whole variety of reasons. But, uh, you know, like you mentioned, uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, again, uh, I certainly made a lot of money as a conventional cardiologist and I gave that all up to do the right thing. And, you know, it sounds, you know, a little cliche, but as I started to, you know, as I got married and I learned all this information from my wife, as she opened up my eyes as a uh, DC doctor of chiropractic, and she said, you got to become a DC doctor of cause. But then as we started having children, and again, it became a matter of, yeah, what, you know, at the, at the end of life, what do I, I say that I, you know, you know, that I, well, I, I stayed in the system. I did it for the money. So we would have, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, toys and whatnot. Uh, or I can look at my children and say, no, I, I left the, uh, the security, I left the matrix, uh, I left uh, all of that behind to do the right thing. And, uh, you know, it's been, uh, it's been almost 10 years and it's been a phenomenal journey and it puts me in touch with people like you and, and all of your listeners. And again, our, our tribe, our herd, uh, you know, our, our community. And it's really, uh, it's really exciting. And I think the future is very bright for all of us. I agree, my friend. And I think despite the hard two years we've had, it's really opened so many doors that I think has opened quicker than it would have been otherwise. And, um, you know, you you never failed on being honest with your opinions during the, the during the pandemic and uh, did it very, very strongly and tactfully, though. So thank you, my friend. And you are a hero in my mind. And I know other people would believe that, too. So take care. Your family's beautiful. And we will be talking probably in six months about some other um, topic with cardiac health. Keep on keeping on.